everyone, Nick Taylor here from Menagerie Studio, and today we are looking at the brand new Air 2S from DJI and comparing it to our existing drone, the Phantom 4 Pro V2. Let's check it out. So like I said, today we're looking at a brand new offering from DJI, the Air 2S. Now we use aerial shots in a lot of our videos, especially when we want some nice establishing shot by getting that perspective that you can only really get from the air. We've been a fan of the Phantom series for a while now. It's been the best combination of pro level video features at an affordable price. Now, both of these drones I would consider in the prosumer category. Now, DJI has their Inspire series, which offers interchangeable lenses. Actually, you can change out the entire camera module. But really, these offerings are probably the best value proposition out there right now for getting aerial shots into your footage. So with all that said, let's take a look at why you might wanna consider the Air 2S over something like the Phantom, and maybe even over something like the Mavic Pro 2, which has become very popular and is a very capable aerial imaging device. So what's interesting about the Air 2S is they've added some really amazing imaging capabilities. The Air 2S in particular has its headline feature as a 5.4K 30P capable video camera. Now there's a lot of different things to consider when you're trying to pick the best drone for your purposes. So to start out, there's an obvious size difference here. The Phantom is sort of this classic style that hasn't changed for the last five or so years. One of the major differences is obviously the camera mounting position here is further away from the props. So you have less chance of getting the props in your footage when you're traveling at high speeds. But uh, another major difference and something I consider a win for the Mavic series and this Air series is that it is completely collapsible and very compact. From a design perspective, this Air 2S just seems like a more modern, sleek design. It's much more compact. And that's something that we're going to discuss a lot here is not so much which one is the best camera. Really what we're looking at is which one is going to fit into your workflow the best? What is going to make your life easier and still give you good professional results? So now let's get into some of the nitty gritty of the specs for these two drones and I'll throw in the specs for the Mavic 2 Pro as well. So the first thing we're gonna look at is weight. The weight of the Air 2S is 595 grams compared with 1,375 grams for the Phantom 4 Pro. And just for reference, the Mavic 2 Pro comes in at just over 900 grams. When we're looking at flight time, they're pretty much the same across the board. As far as the sensors go, they all have a 20 megapixel one inch CMOS sensor. Where we're gonna see the difference is the readout that you get from that sensor, specifically when it comes to video. As I mentioned before, the Air 2S is capable of recording in the full sensor readout of 5.4K at 30 frames per second. The Phantom 4 Pro tops out at DCI 4K at 60 frames per second, and the Mavic Pro 2 tops out at 4K UHD 30 frames per second. Another big difference between the cameras is that the Air 2S comes with a fixed aperture of f2.8, where the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic 2 Pro both come with a variable aperture that goes from f2.8 F2.8 to F11. Now the fixed aperture might seem like a big con when you're up in the air and you wanna change the exposure, but in practice, lighting conditions up in the air aren't gonna change all that much. So if you get good exposure while you're on the ground, you're not gonna to have to change things too much and you still are able to change the ISO while in the air. And there's a very usable range that should give you the flexibility you need to change exposure while in flight. So another upgrade in the Air 2S technology is that it shoots at a higher bitrate video. It can still shoot in the H.265 HEVC codex that both the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic 2 Pro can shoot in, but this one shoots in 150 megabits per second, where both of the other drones top out at 100 megabits per second. So it's easy to kind of get caught up in the specs on paper, but essentially what this is allowing is giving you more data per second of video in the Air 2S compared with the Phantom 4 Pro and the DJI Mavic Pro 2. 
Now, another difference between these two cameras is that the Air 2S can shoot in 10-bit D-Log, where the Phantom 4 Pro is limited to an 8-bit codec. It can shoot in D-Log, but in my experience, using d cine -like is a better option for the 8-bit codec that you're shooting in on the Phantom 4 Pro. Now, the DJI Mavic Pro 2 can shoot in 10-bit log, just like the Air 2S. That 150 megabit per second codec, I think allows for more information when you get to post-production and you're trying to push the color grade a little further. Another nice feature of the Air 2S and the Mavic Pro 2 is that it does have eight gigabytes of internal storage. Now, having used the Phantom 4 Pro, which does not have any internal storage, there have been times where I've shown up and wanted to get some drone footage and forgot an SD card. Yes, it happens to the best of us. So having that internal storage to save you in those situations is actually a really nice feature. So another upgrade that we're seeing in the Air 2S compared to the other two drones is that it's using the brand new O3 transmission signal. So that's OcuSync 3.0 where the other two use the OcuSync 2.0. Basically, this just means that it is a better signal from the remote controller to the drone itself. Now in practice, I am never flying the drone that far away from me, but what I will say is that when flying both of these, I trust the transmission here a lot more. So the other bonus of the transmission technology in the Air 2S, as opposed to the other two drones, is that you're able to get a live view at 1080p, 30 frames per second, where these are limited to 720p. So having that extra resolution in your live view is gonna allow you to better pull focus and see all the details of the image while you're filming. So next, we'll look at the performance of these different drones. Now, the top speed of the other two drones is 72 kilometers per hour, where the Air 2S is limited to 68.4 kilometers per hour. Not a huge difference, but slightly slower on the Air 2S. Now, one of the considerations I had moving from a bigger, bulkier drone to a smaller, lighter drone is that it might be more susceptible to getting pushed around in high wind, but this one is just as stable, if maybe not a little more stable, even in high wind scenarios. This one can withstand winds up to 38.5 kilometers per hour, where the others top out at 38. So very similar, but it's surprising that the Air 2S can really hold its own, even though it is the lightest of the three. Now, another thing to consider that a lot of drones are implementing into their design are these sensing capabilities. So the Phantom 4 Pro has two sensors on the back, it has sensors on the side, it has sensors on the bottom, and it has sensors on the front. Something interesting they did on the Air 2S is it does have forward-facing sensors, it has backward-facing sensors, and it has sensors on the bottom. And then new with this design is it actually has two upward facing sensors. Now one feature that it's lacking is sideways facing sensors. Now that might seem like an odd omission with the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic Pro 2 both having sideways sensors, but I think in practice what's happening here is that it's using these top sensors as sort of a blended sensor to detect things to the side and above. Now it's yet to be seen how big of a detriment this is going to be to avoiding obstacles. So one other thing of note is the Air 2S and the Mavic Pro 2 have an electronic shutter where the Phantom 4 Pro has a mechanical shutter, which basically gets rid of some of the jello effect of the rolling shutter that you experience in these cameras. So one other new feature that is not in either of the two drones and is probably gonna start being in a lot of drones now is the ADS-B system. Basically what this does is it can intercept and interpret the ADS signals from aircraft in the area and will give you a live positioning of any aircrafts that are flying around. So basically when you're looking at the map on the Air 2S, you will actually see icons of aircraft in the area so you can steer clear of them. So another difference is the controller technology. Each have their own pros and cons, I'd say, but I'm really liking the design of the Air 2S. So the Air 2S controller is definitely smaller than the Phantom 4 Pro. This thing, it's a little cumbersome, 
and the way the phone mounts on it, I am not a huge fan because this tends to loosen over time. And if you're shooting with like a big iPad, it tends to fall flat no matter how tight you get this thing. Now the Air 2S, you are unfortunately probably not gonna fit a uh, iPad in here, but it does mount your phone nicely. And importantly to me, it has a built-in cable here that you plug into your phone, and that just tucks away into the controller. And just having that built-in cable really is a lifesaver. Just one less thing to uh, forget on set. Now another interesting feature they added on here is actually this little middle switch here, and it basically allows you to switch between the modes. Now, the Phantom 4 Pro also has a mode switch, but this has a Cine switch. In order to get cinematic movement, and that's smooth tilting and turning and braking, like basically just smoothing all of that out so you're not getting these jerky motions in your footage. With the Phantom 4 Pro, you basically have to go into the Expo settings and change all these different parameters manually. The Air 2S has made this really simple with a cinema mode. It slows everything down, smooths everything out, and it's really effective and convenient to just have a switch for that. So finally, I think the obvious consideration is what value are you getting for your dollars here? And this is where I think the Air 2S really shines. Between all of its top line features, its imaging capabilities, its new transmission technology, its air sense with the ADS-B, you're really packing a lot of features into this small footprint and the price tag is much more approachable. So looking at the base price of all three drones, the Air 2S is definitely the cheapest at $1,000 for the base kit. The other two are both $1,599 or $1,600. Now where the value gets even better is actually with the Fly More package, which is what we bought. Now the DJI Mavic Pro 2 also has a Fly More kit, which gives you similar features, although the Air 2S has included ND filters in their Fly More kit. The other thing you'll notice is the total price for the Air 2S with the Fly More kit is $1,299 or $1,300, and the Mavic Pro 2 with its Fly More kit comes in at $2,000, and you don't get ND filters in that kit. And finally, to get an equivalent setup, you're looking at close to $2,300 to get the equivalent package for the Phantom 4 Pro. So you might be wondering, why are we comparing these two drones? If we've been using the Phantom 4 Pro V2 for a while now, why would we consider this an upgrade? And you're right, if you own either of those drones, I don't think I would worry about upgrading to the Air 2S. These drones are pretty equivalent and they're all going to do a fantastic job and the differences are gonna be very subtle. But for our specific scenario, we had an unfortunate event where our Phantom 4 Pro V2 crashed into a tree when it malfunctioned. But right when I made the decision to rebuy the same drone that we had, here comes the Air 2S. After all of our flying experience with the Phantom 4 Pro V2, I still think it is a great drone, but maybe an aging technology set. I personally think the look of the Air 2S is much more sleek. And I know I've said a couple times that this one is just so much easier to take around, and I'll prove that. Here is the carrying case with all of the Fly More packages. So it's all the batteries, the battery hub, the ND filters, everything. So obviously this is something that you can sling over your shoulder and maybe while you're filming something with your mirrorless camera, you can have your entire drone set up just hanging on your hip. Now our Phantom 4 Pro V2 package goes in here which is a big, bulky backpack. And because this thing doesn't collapse down, it has to go in this giant pocket here. And it's just really not the best solution. These are all just little things that kind of add up to an overall better experience with the Air 2S. And I find that for filmmaking, when I'm deciding to get a new piece of gear, the number one question I ask myself is not, is this maximizing resolution? Or is this the top level imaging quality that I can get? My number one question is, is this piece of equipment going to make my life easier? Now in this case, I'm getting 5.4K over the Cinema 4K. We're getting 10-bit color versus 8-bit color. We're getting 150 megabits per second bitrate versus the 100 on the Phantom. So for us, 
When I added everything up, it really was a no-brainer to go with the Air 2S. Now, if you have any questions or comments about the products we talked about today, I'll have links down in the description for where you can pick them up, and feel free to post your comments and questions down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this content, and hit that bell to get notified anytime we put out new videos. I'm Nick Taylor with the Menagerie Studio, and we will see you in the next video.